Hello everyone and welcome to episode 21 of the Spawn Point. It's been, I believe, four weeks since we last did this, was it? Four weeks or I'm five weeks? I'm still waiting for Steve to invite us down a back alley to record it again. Oh yeah, that's right. On uh, episode 20, Steve said... Bridal path. Oh, uh, we're going to go down a back a alley. Bridal <laughs> way. A bridal way. A bridal way, remember that. <laughs> Whatever he said, I, do, I don't want to be a part of it. But we are here for episode 21. We're back on Skype. Um, we're not at Earl's Court anymore, that'd be weird. Um, and we are joined with Daisy, who is from Evolve. And if you watched our live stream with me and Andy playing Evolve, I had a love affair with Daisy, so it's good to see you, Daisy. Uh, she won't and say And if you don't back. understand She's that, give you, me the you missed treatment. out on all the fun. Just... But we've got quite a lot to cover for this episode. Um, first of all, we've got the fact that me and Steve went and bought oh, Advanced yeah, maybe. Warfare on day zero. Or what you want to call it? Um, I didn't get it for Day Zero Edition or anything like that. Um, I still think that's stupid. But um, it's if you go back to Episode 6, I said something along the lines of, um, I'm going to break that tradition. I'm not going to buy it this year. So I'm, I'm breaking that tradition this year. I'm not buying the game. See you I, now. <laughs> but let's talk about uh, Evolve. The big out. Actually, well, before we talk about Evolve, let's just talk about Steve. Um, why did you get Advanced Warfare? on uh, digital PC at roughly midnight. Why did you get it? Okay, right. So this is how it all panned out. Basically, Matt told me that he was getting Advanced Warfare, and then basically I went and watched a load of videos on YouTube about Advanced Warfare, and then I absolutely... No, seriously, I fell in love with the graphics. Everything about it just looked amazing. So anyway, Matt was queuing up, and I thought, I'm going to go into the midnight release, but I'm going to go to the midnight release on G2A.com, which is, if you don't know what G2A.com is, it's where you can get cheap games. Anyway, I went there and bought it, and I started playing it, and the game is immense. I actually thought I was actually in the game. Well, yeah, so you didn't actually attend, technically attend the midnight release. No, I didn't, but I kind of well. did. But I didn't even get it at midnight anyway, because this is... I kind of, I queued up, I queued up early. I got there, I was like, I'll make sure I get here early, because there was quite a lot of people when it got to midnight. Uh, I went to like my local game store, and there was another guy there, and I chatted to him for about two or three it was it ended up being three hours because this is what happened so i got there about 10 doors were meant to open at 11 so i was like great i'm only here for like an hour they didn't let us in until 12 and then we got in and then the servers were down on the tills so we were sat on the ground in the game store for an hour and then they finally said oh take cash in hand for the transactions rather than do can't do credit card so everybody left the store and ran to all the different bank like uh, atm machines and just ran um to take their money out and i was like first in the queue and i ended up being 20th in the queue because the service down because when i got back other people jumped in front of me um so i didn't get it until like by the time i got it, it was like one o'clock um and then i just so i kind of regret that because you know it was so late and I just couldn't be bothered. But like, I, I do, I have enjoy playing it. And I'm not just saying that because it's like a honeymoon phase or anything like that. I do actually, like Andy asked me what I thought of it. Mm. And I said to him, like prior to this recording, that I genuinely believe that this is the, the first decent one since a long time, since the last four years, I'd say. I mean, I would, um, I would like to yeah. point out throughout the whole of this, I was just on Twitter going, y you what? <laughs> <laughs> you, well, we were doing? winding you up to some extent. We were like, like, yeah, let's just tell Andy to get it, and let's just, because you, because you just, the way you reacted, you were like, oh, what are they doing? And then like, I was just thought, oh, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, like, you know, have a bit of fun here. So uh, that was that was why, if you were following us on Twitter, there was a long stream of tweets just going back and forth but um let's move on from advanced warfare and let's talk about what steve installed and uninstalled but never actually played um which is the evolve big alpha it's about 15 gigabytes of size on pc and me and andy what happened andy when we first started up the game oh, it was it was queuing simulator it everything was broken uh, the, the playstation 4 version doesn't work and at, at the time of recording it's actually now in the uh, the alpha and the only thing that actually worked was the the xbox one version but yeah we were just stuck in queues for i, th I think i got two hours worth of playtime or playtime before yeah. i actually got i mean game. it said i'd played two hours on steam and that was just of queuing and matchmaking lobbies and 
uh, like I said to you before all this, I said I don't think they should have done an alpha. I really, I think they should have just waited until it was at beta stage because, you know, we, we know what people are like. And then on Twitter, people don't care if it's an alpha. They're still going to just treat it as if that's the final yeah. game. But people are cancelling their pre-orders because of that. Like, you know, whether that's smart or not, you know, is irrelevant. It's just the fact that, you know, if this is the way gamers are going to react, you shouldn't release an alpha, I don't think. I think it's not really a smart thing to do when stuff like that could potentially go. Mm. I mean, it could have gone wrong even at beta or when it was released, like, because it was the servers. It wasn't the game was, the game worked fine, but it was just the matchmaking. But what did you think when we actually got to play it? I actually, I was quite enjoying it, to be honest. Uh, I mainly played the, the medic role. Um, I, did you actually play the medic at all? Um, I, I did. I played like one match as the medic, but I just, it wasn't mm. for me. Um, I feel like I was running around like an errand boy, just healing everybody, and I don't like doing that. So I wanted to be a soldier. Yeah, I, I quite enjoyed the being the medic, though. Although for some reason they seem to be the slowest one out of the the characters, and I always had to sort of like run to catch up and be like, "Hey guys, don't don't leave me behind." <laughs> uh, but yeah, and and the other thing is obviously you can select what role you prefer to be, mm. like. Because it's 4v1, you can say, oh, well, I'd most like to be the medic, or I'd most likely want to be the trapper, or whatever. You know, yeah. you can pick so your preferences. And out of all of the it. games, um, how many times did you not get your preference? Uh, I I usually... Half the time I got my first preference, and the other, other half I got my second preference. So I never got third or fourth. I, I think... I was always very good at getting my first or second choice. I think it was only one that. game I had where I didn't get my first choice, which I, I feel like they've, they've obviously done that quite well. Um, but for those that, that didn't manage to play it, the, the medic has, or all of the characters have four abilities, and the medic's got a, a heal gun, a burst heal, a sniper rifle, uh, which marks the, the monster, and if you, if everyone else shoots in that same place, it does bonus damage to it, and also a tranquilizer dart. Which um, slows down the monster, and I, I was I enjoyed that class. Yeah, I mean, from the live streaming we did, it was kind of a bit of a. It wasn't a very productive live stream because we just talked so much drivel, um, but I, I still had fun mm. playing it, um, and it was quite an interesting having this four on one thing. I did find a few of the early matches we had, like the, mon the whoever played as the monster was really derpy, yeah. and they didn't really know what they were doing. Um, but we had one really good match was with that guy, shout out to Catsby or Gatsby, yeah, can't remember Catsby. what it was, but shout out to him. Uh, he, he kind of was, he knew what he was doing and we played with like him as the trapper and we were like, I was like support or assault and mm. you were medic. And, uh, that was probably one of the good matches we had that kind of made me like the I game. I think but... the, the one issue with it is, um, if, if the person playing the monsters playing it really well and everyone else isn't playing their roles it can go really badly uh, especially like I, I definitely got distracted sometimes as medic trying to just attack the the monster uh, when I thought everyone else was downed and then uh, next thing and I was like hey we need some healing like, oh, sh and we need to do that and <laughs> and people do really start to to like die if you're not healing them or if you're if you're the trapper and you don't put traps down and um, that that could be the one problem I, I feel with the game now, Steve, you didn't. You installed the game, and it took you about five hours to install. But did you actually have a chance to play any of it? No, because it took me such a long time to <laughs> download it. Um, I had a good internet connection, but I don't anymore. But anyway, no, I, I didn't get a chance to play it. And from looking at a few things, I, I kind of wish that I did, like. Mm get out of bed for it to play it because I you know looking at your live stream what you and Andy did it looked really good it, it looked a kind of a game that I, I wanted to have a go on but I never got the chance to I have to say uh, as well did you play the the monster map no I uh, never played so... as the monster I was probably half the time I was support and half the time I was assault and then one match that we had I was medic mm -hmm. And um, other than that, I, yeah, just, just usually assault or support most of the time from what I did play. And I played like three or four hours of it and mm. about two hours of waiting. See, um, I, I played four games as the monster um, on the day after the live stream. And the the way that seemed to work, if you remember, there was a few games that we started and we lost the trail straight away. 
So basically, when when you all jump in, um, you try and pick up the trail for the monster, and uh, it's just these sort of luminous blue footprints, and that's the way you find it. But I found out if you're the monster, and you can go into a sneak mode, and if you're in that sneak mode, all of the, the footprints disappear. So if you jump down, if you start straight away, go into sneak, and then sneak away, people might have a real hard uh, time of finding you, and that that seems to make the the game a lot better and then you just end up going along feeding on all of the the local creeps um and then after you've fed like a certain amount each obviously smaller ones give you a slightly less of a, a buff towards the next level and when you get to a certain stage and um, you can evolve and when you originally <coughs> pick a monster you you've got four skills that you can have uh, and there's obviously different types of monster but you can You've got three levels per per evolution stage. So, for instance, you could pick um, you could put all of the points into like fire breath, or you could put it into a rock throw, or into uh, there was dash and also a power slam. Um, in in that I can't remember what the monster's called. And then each time you evolve again, you get another three points. And then you can also, if, you, if you're killing the local wildlife, you get that sort of shield, which is the, the blue bar that goes up. So playing the monster, um, it was a bit of a cat and mouse thing. Uh, and it seems like if you're, if you're not sneaking around, if you're not getting away from everyone else and you're not playing the monster right, you can get just completely killed. Well, I think from what I... I still stand by what I said when I uh, finished playing with like on PC. Um, from what I did, I still have the same mindset that I wouldn't buy. Not that it's a bad game. Like this is some things that people get wrong when we talk about our first impressions of things. They think that if we say we're not going to buy it, that means it's a bad game, <clears throat> um, which I think is a bit of the misunderstanding. Is that we might not? It might be a good game. It just might not be our type of game or. We, you know, everyone has their different values for how much they would be willing to spend on something. And for me, from what I played, I w if Evolve was on sale, then I would pick it up. But for full price, I wouldn't just because for me personally, I don't think I'd get enough playtime out of it for it to be what I consider worth that amount of money. Mm. Um, but I still think it's a good game. Yeah, and it's, um, it's definitely one of the, the best looking games uh, out for a while. Although yeah. I, I can get it above 60 frames per second and... Um, I've got a fairly beefy rig. Uh, yeah. But. Well, um, going from the Evolve Big Alpha to something completely um, just off topic and completely random, nothing to do with the um, Alpha, is something that you found, Andy, which is an article, uh, credit goes to giantbomb.com, I believe they're the ones who wrote the article, uh, about Nintendo um, having a peripheral that monitors our sleep. Um, seeing as you're the one who found this, Andy, do you just want to give us a rundown of what the intentions are behind this and how they plan for this? Yes, yeah, so um, basically Nintendo are uh, are sort of going uh, with this sort of quality of life initiative and uh, their their project is that they're, they're going to, uh, by March 2016, have a sort of peripheral that you can put on your your bedside cabinet or, or or somewhere like that and it monitors your sleep and it's in conjunction with a, a company called resmed um inc who are known for treating sleeping disorders and it, according to the the article giant bomb uh, the device will in theory seamlessly upload data to the cloud and provide user user information on the uh, quality of the previous night's sleep and uh, figurative and fatigue levels so steve quality of life do you like the quality of life so uh, far yeah I, I do like the quality of life yeah uh, do you think nintendo could improve it for you with their sleeping oh, peripheral yeah. or any peripherals for that matter do you think nintendo can improve your i think i could life? break nintendo's peripheral to be honest because my sleeping pattern my, my whole sleep kind of schedule and all that is messed up as we all know it's a, i think what i read from the comments is a little bit bizarre like people are not bizarre but people think people were saying some people were like i thought nintendo was a games company like what's all this stuff about like is this a little do you think this is um sensible for nintendo to, to do do you think that um 
this is understandable or do you think Nintendo should just put all of their focus in video games and I, I think this is I, if they were to if this was to be a thing I would I think I'd actually invest in this because I'd like to see the data that's collected to see how I've slept and all that stuff if I smash the peripheral up or anything like that you know uh, it's it's just something I I, I can understand Nintendo's got like the Wii Fit and and everything like that, and they they do want to seem to be this healthy company. But just having something overtly monitoring stuff while I'm sleeping, it's just it's just yeah. a bit creepy. Like, well, I've got the connector that does that. For yeah, but you me don't already, have so. to buy. You don't have to buy the peripheral. <laughs> it's not something no. that's going to be built into a system. No, it, I understand you. Don't. Look, all you have to do, you don't have to wait as peripheral. You just get connect. And then just have that because it watches I mean, you anyway. The connect apparently. is creepy. The government just, spies uh, on you. Just having the connect listening to you and and the the PS4 as well. Uh, and <laughs> it's just like I don't. They're having conversations I, with each other. I, like, I, oh, would you hear I what Matt want, said? I don't want it. these things listening to me. Like, I remember we were chatting. Uh, I can't remember which topic it was, but you said something. And oh, your when I was talking. On. And and I'll do an example. So what I said, oh, this better work. <laughs> so what I said was I said, I was talking about the Xbox on. <laughs> it's not doing it now. <laughs> Hang on. It's not doing it. Xbox one. No, it's, no, it's no, not going to do it. Okay, it's deciding to play Xbox. No. No, it doesn't. Um, but yeah, we were talking about like console wars, I think. Um, or no, it might have been a different one. We were comparing, we we're talking about oh, what you should get, yeah, one, and, and, like an Xbox One or a PS4. And uh, yours just turned um, on. Sorry, it's, thought... like, it's like the my phone as well. Uh, Apple have, have said, hey, if you want it, you can just say, hey, Siri, and it will pop into life. And you can uh, get it. And, and Siri will listen to it. And I was like, no, I don't want my phone listening I... to everything. It's just like I don't want people listening to me while I'm sleeping and, and getting feedback about how I'm sleeping. That that just that's not for me, I don't think. Although, list on the topic of and I know Steve's done this as well, on the topic of list things listening to you when you sleep, um a funny story actually. I downloaded an app on my phone and this was I wanna I, th- I think it was three years ago. Um and I was at uni at the time and um I had like this sleeping app thing because so I was interested oh do I talk in my sleep mm. or you mm. know like so someone told me about it like um they were saying that they use this app and then they heard this voice that wasn't like like they didn't recognize the voice or something so I was like oh like you know so oh, ooh, spooky like so I just played it and then like oh no I I came back home for like the weekend I had this app and I fired it up, I was like, oh, this is going to be stupid. So I just set it to, like, record, and I slept. And when I woke up the next day, and I think I played it back to Steve, the recording, this you can hear oh, this yeah. little girl, and she makes, like, a noise. Like, she says something like, and then my door slams. It was really creepy. But I asked, I asked the other people in my house, I said, did you shut my door at all or slam it? They said, no. I said, did you come in my room at did all? Did you invite no. a little girl so it was and really... to my room? No. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> It was probably like Alma from Fear or something. I don't know. But like, um, Steve recorded himself and, uh, I don't know if he talked a lot in his sleep or he had like a conversation with himself or something. But, um, I would, that, I would be interested to see if it would have the same sort of results with this peripheral. But do you, do you think overall with this kind of direction that the Nintendo might be going in, that their, their ambitions are less, I can, if you think about the Wii Fit, uh, the sleeping peripheral that they're talking about and uh, other things like fitness. Are they more ambitious about healthy lifestyles than they are about video games? And, um, are they more interested in that side of things rather than making fun games? They're just making things that I think, keep you fit. Like, I think that's... Nintendo want to put their fingers in all the pies. You know, they want to be in gaming. They want to be in fitness. They want to be in, you know, the sleeping app. They, I think they want a, a piece of everything. You know, they want a piece that, um, uh, 360 hasn't, um, 360, Xbox One hasn't got, PS4 hasn't got. So I think they're just trying to break into a new market. Yeah, that, that's, that sounds, uh, that's pretty much what I was going to say. I think, I think they're trying to get that still a unique selling point for the, for the Wii. Because um, cause it is behind in in all the sales. If you you, know, if you watch the news um, episode this week, it's it's been out for two years and it it hasn't sold um, as many as the the PS4 has sold. And in this 
Well, even the Xbox if, One has overtaken. Even really the now. Xbox One, if you compare it to sales per year, uh, it's it's overtaking mm. it. Um, and and they they are struggling. So I, I guess if they're they're trying to reach out to all of these different things, like maybe people were interested in that, and and I don't know if that's what everyone wants. Well, I'm actually really considering buying a Wii U, and the reason being is because I played it at EGX, and that kind of spurred me when we played it, Andy, at EGX. I kind of, you know, I I I. I had, had a little bit more respect for the Wii U, you know, I didn't give it that chance, and I kind of think that people that don't really like these consoles need to give them a chance, or, you know, that what they're mm. trying to do is bring them to a new market, and I think that this could be a good idea. I just think it was badly marketed, to be honest. It, definitely the, the fact that it's called Wii U, I, I just originally thought that was some peripheral for the original Wii. Uh, I do, I I do agree that. with that. I do agree with that. The, the, the marketing they did for that was, you know, you know, pretty bad if you are, you know, ask me yourself. Like, and I now let's, uh, I kind of want to just shift on to the next topic, okay. um, which is to do with Twitch TV. Um, now, supposedly, I, I was keeping a, a keen eye on Twitter, and a few people were saying that people were getting banned on Twitch because, um, like they were wearing sexually suggestive clothing, um. Like, I think it was just even just cleavage, and they were like, nope. I got some before that, though. That's not acceptable. But um, I'm just going to run through first on what uh, some of the stuff that's covered in the co- in the uh, rules of conduct. So you've got... Uh, so, okay, so they've got self-destructive behavior, which is just drinking excessively, endangering yourself while broadcasting. Um, and then you've got... Uh, which is sexually explicit content from games to images you show to links so uh nudity can't be the core focus uh it you basically it's not allowed like this suggestive clothing so they tell you to dress uh, appropriately so um stuff like the fun the thing that makes me laugh is it says um this is the bit some people may say oh yeah well obviously if a girl is wearing a bikini then that's going to be obvious but there's a few things so it says, um, wearing no clothing or sexually suggestive clothing, including lingerie, swimsuits, is that past pasties? Past- they can't be pasties. Uh, past- like, oh yeah, pasties. let's wear a Cornish pasty. It's a pasties. Nipple. Wear a it's Cornish pasty. All right. I've never seen someone stream oh one of those. I'm sure, but, um, someone, I'm sure uh, someone's un- obviously <laughs> tried it. <laughs> um, undergarments, and it says, um, as well as fully full new torsos, which applies to both male and female broadcasters. So effectively, if if you've got uh, no top on as a guy, you might think that's fine, but that's still not acceptable. Um, so if you do topless streams, um, then you, you're going to have a trouble on Twitch because they're not going to allow it. But um, overall, what do you think? Do you think that um it's it's gone too far with their censorship rules do you think some of the rules are ridiculous um do you think that it it all makes sense and that everybody should basically wear like a full neck sweater turtleneck type thing and some of the rules some of the rules have to be put in place you know they they have to be put in place like if you're endangering yourself and stuff like that but the stuff for nudity right you see people on youtube i'm not going to name these people who they are but you see these women that just wear a bra you know that have a bra on not not for the whole video but they they put a bra on and whatever you see a man in a video and he's got no top on i don't have a problem with that if there's someone that is going complete nude that is a different kettle of fish you know because that is wrong i don't i think twitch have gone a step too far so would you say it's sort of becoming like a nanny state? In, in yeah, it's like too. you're telling people you need to dress appropriately. It's like you're attending an interview or something. You have to dress like this. You know, it's a live stream. People tune in. If they don't like it, they can tune out. They can report it. You don't have to go. Twitch does not have to go, you know, like, like, like they're doing. Like, I don't understand it. You know, the whole point of it is to be yourself. You know, obviously, if you're showing your whole body off on stream, then that's a different cat or fish like i said but showing you know just it is do you know what's weird for me i don't mean to interrupt you but what's weird for me is um when you go to the beach for example and you see a guy and he's like topless you don't go oh my god avert your eyes children oh you you know why are you like that you know like censor that or whatever but like you know when it's on a live stream it's suddenly unacceptable um 
it's kind of, and I mean, I know they, they use examples of like, oh, well, you know, save that stuff for the beach. But if you don't have a problem seeing that, unless it's not a nudist beach, obviously, but if it's a regular beach and these people are like, you know, they're not too revealing, then how can it not be okay for I've a live been... stream? Like, if it's okay in public, yeah, how's it not just, okay? Let me just take that analogy and translate hmm. it to a uh, height of summer and you have the, the, the sort of guys walking around the streets just in towns, just topless with their shirt mm. tucked into their trousers. And it's like, really? Yeah, but you don't ever see people just like, oh, that's inappropriate or people covering their yeah. eyes or saying. I, I don't wear any t-shirt when it's hot. Like, at the end of the day, you know, it's, you know, you're viewing a stream and whatever it may be. I've just got the worst you image know, right now. <laughs> All right. Stupid. You're viewing a stream, yeah? Look at these. You know, it's down to you. But, but let me get this one thing out there. I've been to a few nudist beach, yeah? But it's okay for the parents and the children to walk past. That's perfectly fine. But if you view that on a stream, oh no, it's got to be reported. Twitch have got to take some action. I, I but think... now, hang on, you're contradicting yourself because now you're saying nudist I, is okay. I, 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 I think... no, no, I'm saying a nudist beach, but doing it on a stream where potentially children could view that if you're, you know, nudist while playing a game. That's inappropriate. I I think uh, I think Twitch are are. The, I mean, the, their original policy before they actually brought this out was was pretty much uh, there was not meant to be any nudity, implied nudity, and if you weren't actually allowed to be wearing uh, like bra and panty and having all of those those pictures on on the uh, on your your channel as well. Um, mm. And I I feel like they they've just made it like an equal opportunities thing it's like well the females oh you're not allowed to to stream topless so we're just going to make it but really it's how well. it's how society how society views it really is whether it's right or wrong like if society views like oh well what's acceptable and what's not then you can't have a, re a different set of rules it seems weird to have a different set of rules for live streams when generally like if okay Let's say by law, right? If 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 a woman was to kind of like take a top off and she had no bra on, she ran around the street, then she could get arrested for, you know, indecent like, exposure, you know, indecent exposure. But if a guy did it, now I'm not saying this is right or wrong, but if a guy did it and did that, then that'd be okay. They're not going to get in trouble. So, with that being the case, how come there's different I, sets of rules for? I think, I think also. Okay. Uh, like if let's just talk about let's take the the nudist speech analogy people know that there's a nudist speech there at that certain place um or unless they mm. they they don't know it's there and they just come across it but uh, <laughs> that that is yeah. yes I've, what a lovely day in the in the, in the beach you know? <laughs> what was, however um something like twitch you can access that pretty much mm. anywhere in the world so you could just come across a stream and there'd be, oh, there's a, a nude person or I, someone inappropriately I a, dressed. I have a solution. I have a solution. Now, I'm not saying that people should, like, be nude or should that be, like, you know, wear nothing at all, pretty much, or barely anything. But shouldn't, wouldn't it be smarter to age gate streams if you want to? You know, for YouTube videos, you can say, oh, this is maturity and it's only 18+. plus. Wouldn't it be worth you could do that for a stream where you could say, you have to have an account on Twitch and verify that you are this age. Otherwise, you can't view the stream. Because then by verifying your age, you're saying, I'm, I'm, you know, if you've got a warning saying this stream may be viewed as inappropriate in some eyes, only for 18 plus audiences. Like a, just like a warning thing. Like sometimes when you, just like you get on YouTube where the video might be visually upsetting or it might be only for mature audiences. And, and they, that comes up. They have up that and, already, don't they? Uh, I'm sure they, I'm sure they. On Twitch, I don't. I've never I want to say one thing. A tick box to say that my my stream's a mature one on on Twitch and settings. Yeah, yeah I want to point something out. Yeah, Facebook have done a, a very similar thing. There was a post that was put up, a video actually, of a woman breastfeeding, right? Her, you know, her child, um, and it was on a on a group, and the video and the group got got taken down yeah because it was it, it was deemed as inappropriate now if i'm not saying this i, I wouldn't go searching this up why was she breastfeeding she was breastfeeding she was showing she was yeah why why was she breastfeeding because no, she was pump? showing people of how to breastfeed and um like with a pump and stuff like that yeah to show but did it actually what? show did it show her boob yes it did did it 
right? Did it, did it uh-huh. show, okay, did it but then nipple? so anyone could stumble upon it. Did it show her nipple? Yeah. I wasn't really looking, Andy. I didn't... <laughs> I didn't... He's like, uh, anyway, ca- uh, carry, carry on with yeah, your so, yeah. so I wouldn't look this up on Twitch, but do you say, for instance, there was a live stream where a woman's showing a tutorial like of how to breastfeed properly. Would that be taken down? Would that be seen as... Well, yeah, probably, because yeah, it's, it's not gaming-related. Unless it was <laughs> how to play, just, how to play was... a game with your, with your breastfeed. There would be no game. reason to breastfeed <laughs> on a Twitch stream. <laughs> because you would be like... She should be playing League of Legends. You shouldn't be breastfeeding her child. <laughs> I'm just trying to put some out there, but the thing... <laughs> okay. Oh, oh dear. God. We are still talking just about Twitch here. Right. I didn't about look TV. at it, to be honest with you. You know, seriously. Okay, we don't... Okay, it's okay. You. You're, not, you're you. not in trouble. I'm disappointed. Um, but over... I think these. I think these rules are sensible to some degree but i think some of the things are ridiculous like swimsuits who's gonna wear when have i seen a live stream where someone's gone let me just get my one piece uh bikini on <laughs> like i mean I, I know it's there to cover to to cover that but it's like a little bit there like are extreme there are definitely sort of uh female streamers and i'm not gonna mention any names that have if this if this is the screen they've got that much mm. that much of it is is them and then up in the, the top corner is the game, and it's like, well, hang on a second, am I watching the game here, or am I watching you just sort of splaying about everywhere? So you and can't wear bikinis or anything like that. Or that's all about like, everything. Like... Swimsuits, uh, bikinis. But it'd be a bit weird to wear a bikini while streaming. I do. No, that, no, but was... like low cut tops. Like, would that be acceptable? Like, yeah, but I was trying to figure out what if someone on a stream was to wear a mankini, like that kind of thing. Would that be banned? <laughs> Why would you wear a mankini? I feel like this is really derailed, but why would you wear a mankini? <laughs> We've gone just, from breastfeeding. I, 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 I want to put out there, I don't own a mankini, but. Right, just, okay. Like, no, I don't, Andy. Are you sure? I, okay, That's going to be a quote for the books. That's going to be a quote for the books. I want to put out there, I don't have a mankini. But anyway, I feel like we're massively derailing. Overall, um, do you think that they were sensible to have the sexually suggestive part of their yes. rules of conduct put in there? Yes. Think yeah, I, I think it's a sensible thing. Um, anyone can just go on to Switch, and and even with uh, something like Steam, where they've got, hey, uh, this is an eighteen rated game. Put in your date of birth. I could put in any date of birth in there, and if yeah, but by law, that's the same with like Steam. Yeah, for example. but everyone, you could. I'm say, sure when you were under uh, eighteen, you went on the internet and was yeah. like, hey, yes, I am eighteen. I can look at this site. Yeah, but the thing is, is that that protects you, uh, uh, like law-wise, and you know, legally, that protects you because you've asked for their age, and the person who's at fault is the one who's and pretended. Because that's why, that's why all of the sites ask for your date of birth. They don't care whether, really, it's just there to protect them to say, well, we we tried to stop them, we, we, we tried, but they got it. through. <laughs> but, just because it's a shit system doesn't. Mean but I think that cry. would also be a good thing if. If that doesn't already exist, I think that a bigger thing to kind of have some sort of age gate you can enable. Um, even if it's just like whether you're swearing, like if you wanted to warn people that, you know, because you could come across a stream and they could be like, oh, F this, F that. And if, if you're coming across that, then you don't, for example, when we did Evolve <laughs> and Andy was saying, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then you don't want to come across that, like uh, your kids come across that. So I think having an age gate of some way or just to warn people would help protect Twitch and also would, you know, stop people coming accidentally across that. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, I think we've said our piece about the censorship stuff. Like, we all think it's sensible. We, you know, it, some of the bits it mentions are a little bit funny. References to Top Gun in there. Um, but, um, yeah, this has been, this episode of the Spawn Point has been a little bit of a different uh, format. Um, rather than talk about one topic, we've talked about uh, several, like three or four different things. So if you like this new format that we're doing, prefer to the old world where we just talk about one thing for half an hour um, or 40 minutes or however long it is, um, then let us know. And if you watched our update video, you'll know that you can send feedback to suggest at vectorgaming.co.uk. Uh, you can just drop us an email there. We'll see that and we'll, we'll take that into account. Um, or just leave, you know, if it's easier, leave a comment on this video saying, hey, I like the way you're doing this uh, episode of the podcast. Can you do future ones like that? Um, but yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this bit of a change of how we do things. Um, anything you'd like to say before we end the episode? Please? No, I'm all good. No. Nope. Okay, well, this has been episode 21 of The Spawn Point. Uh, from me, Andy Webb, 
Steve Barnett, and my beloved Daisy from Evolve. It is good B from all of us. Yeah. Good B. Good B.